Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free Microsoft 7680 Certification Training Course. This module is on User Account Control. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the requirements from our Microsoft 7680 Certification Exam. This section is on configuring access to resources, and we're going to focus in this module on User Account Control. We're going to look at configuring local security policy, configuring administrator versus standard UAC prompt behaviors, and configuring secure desktop. User account control is one of those things that has people very, very either happy or upset. There doesn't seem to be a lot of middle ground. When Microsoft Vista was first introduced along the same time as Server 2008, this new technology called UAC or user account control was also implemented. And what it did was present the user with an extra step whenever something was going on on their computer. And people were not very used to this. It was something very new. It stopped you from being able to do anything on your desktop until you answered the question question that was presented to you. This was created as a security task, a security piece that would prevent software from automatically making changes to your computer that would in some way create security issues. Install malware, take advantage of a keylogger on your system, load software you don't didn't want to have loaded. It was uh, and is designed to be a protection mechanism. What happens is that you are, whenever you make important changes to your computer, you add a new driver, you change the configuration of a certain user account, you modify the way your firewall is set. There are many, many different things that can cause this UAC to pop up. It pops up a message on your screen that says, do you want to allow the following program to make changes to your computer? So if you go in and make changes to your network settings, it says, well, I'm making changes to the network configuration. And if you are an administrator, you'll have to approve that. Or if you're not an administrator, then you'll have to put in some authentication that would allow this person to be able to do that on this computer. It is really designed to be something that stops you right in the middle of what you're doing and supposed to make you think about what's going on so that you can make an informed decision. If you really did mean to make these network changes, then you can put in the authentication that would allow you to do that. But if some third party program was trying to make these changes for you, that may not necessarily be a good thing. So you want to make sure that you're looking at this and you're interpreting what it's saying properly. This also pops up something called the Windows Secure Desktop. The entire desktop goes black, and you have this one box sitting on the front. And you can't see anything behind what's going on. It stops all motion on the screen. You don't have access to any of the programs behind the scenes, and that's on purpose. You don't want these pieces of software that are malicious to automatically answer these questions for you. So Windows was really smart in, in the way that it did this, is that it really blocked anything else, any other software from interacting with this. And you have to type in on your keyboard and with your mouse the answer to this. It can't be scripted. It cannot be automated. And that's why we call it the secure desktop. Now, you can enable and disable how much UAC prompts you. You can enable and disable the secure desktop. There are a lot of different settings for this. But it's important to keep in mind that the reason we did this was for security. And because of that, it, it really works quite nicely. The way that you would make changes into how UAC operates on your computer or in your domain is with the security policy that's on your computer. You can go to the control panel under administrative tools. There's an option for local security policy. You could also type in right at the run prompt the secpol.msc, and that will bring up this local security policy screen. And if you look at this, it looks a lot like your global policies you would have, or your group policies you would configure for your domain. And that's because that's exactly what it is. If you were to bring up your group policy screen, you could find the same information by going into your computer configuration, your policies under Windows settings, and security settings. You would find exactly the same information on that computer. So whether you're using your group policies or whether you're going right to your local security policy, you can make these UAC changes in exactly the same place. Let's look at our local security policies. I'm going to go to my Start menu and go to Control Panel and choose my Administrative Tools. And one of the options right in here is to the Local Security Policy. We'll start that up. I'll make this 
a little bit bigger so we can see it. Where I would like to go is right under my local policies, and I'd like to choose security options. And under that security options, there's quite a few <laughs> security options in here. We're only focusing on this module if we scroll all the way to the bottom just on the user account control options. There's not a lot of them, and it, it really makes use, uh, you really would be a good use of you to go through each one of these to be a little more familiar with how UAC works. For instance, you may want to get more information on admin approval mode for the built-in administrator account. And if you double click, it will give you a dialog box that gives you what the options are that says, do you want to enable or disable the admin approval mode for the built-in administrator account? But if you're trying to get more information and understand what exactly is that going to do, there's an explain tab that goes into a lot more detail. So you can see that this policy setting controls the behavior of admin approval mode for the built-in administrator account, which means the default, the administrator account runs all applications with full administrative privileges, or you can have any operation requiring elevation to prompt the user to approve the operation. So you have control over this. If you're the administrator, maybe you want to make the assumption that you know what you're doing. You're not going to run a program that might be dangerous. Therefore, never prompt me. Just run everything as an administrator. Or maybe you'd like to be a little more cautious, and you may want to enable this capability, change the defaults just by going to your local security setting, setting it to enabled, and see if you can make sure that that's what's going to run if you happen to run a computer that needs that admin access. There are different policies here depending on whether you're an administrator or whether you're an end user. For instance, you have some here that changes the behavior of the elevation prompt for administrators in admin approval mode. And you can choose when you would like to be prompted for those types of things. You've also got a setting here for the end users. What is the behavior of the elevation prompt for standard users? Do we automatically deny any, any requests to elevate this permissions? Do we prompt for credentials on the secure desktop? And you'd have to put in some admin credentials or simply prompt for credentials, regardless of the secure desktop options here. That secure desktop is one where it blocks everything in the background. And there are very, very rare occasions where an application might have problems with that remote desktop. So you may be given the option on your computer to change that. For instance, you have one of the UAC uh, policies here, which is switch to the secure desktop when prompting for elevation. When the default is that all requests go to the secure desktop. It really is the best way to make sure that no third-party program is going to automatically script something and get it by you. Or the, you can disable that. Maybe it's an application problem you're having, or you're trying to troubleshoot an application problem. You may want to disable those elevation requests in the time being that go right to the interactive user's desktop and bypass that secure desktop completely. So whether you're changing uh, administrator options, maybe you're changing user options in here, you may want to go through each one of these and just get a feel for how these handful of UAC options would apply if you're changing them, the changing them in this policy view for yourself or for administrators on your network. As an individual user, you might also want to change your UAC options. And you can do that pretty easily from your Start menu under Control Panel. You can go down to your User Settings. Let's go right into User Accounts. And this is my user account. And one of the options I have right here is Change User Account Control Settings. Notice that the little badge next to it, the little shield, means that I have to prompt for permissions if I'm something other than the local admin on this computer. I would like to change User Account Control Settings. And I can change this to Always Notify, where programs try to install software or make changes, or you make changes to Windows settings. You're always going to get a prompt. You can scroll this down all the way to the bottom, which is Never Notify me when any of these things happen. And you can see that Windows says that's not really recommended, not something you'll want to do. The default is right here where you're going to be notified when programs try to make changes to my computer. You can even narrow it down that says don't dim the desktop, which means don't have that secure desktop pop up. So you have a little bit of control if you have the rights and permissions to change this rather than going to the security policy and trying to get the right mix. Windows tried to put a view in here that would make it easy, where you could simply slide a bar and make it as invasive or non-invasive as you'd like. Let's go through a few questions relating to our user account control. Our first question is, how can you start the local security policy from the command line? 
If you recall, we started the local security policy by going to our control panel under our administrative tools, but you could also have gone to the command prompt, the, the start menu, and chosen secpol, S-E-C-P-O-L dot M-S-C to bring up exactly the same screen. The next question is, where can you change the UAC notification settings for individual users? If you're logged in and you have access to be able to do this, you can simply go to your control panel under your user accounts and choose the option for change user account control settings. And then you can slide that slider up and down to be whatever you'd like it to be. And the last question is, how can you disable the secure desktop? Well, one of the ways was to go into the user account control settings, but perhaps one that would be more global for everybody in the organization would be to go into our group policy or our security policy and choose the option to switch to the secure desktop when prompting for elevation. Well, that covers the requirements we needed to know for this configuring access to resources section that focused solely on user account control. We now know how to configure local security policy. We can change the administrative versus standard UAC prompt behaviors, whether you're in the group policy or in the user settings. And we've looked at how you can configure secure desktop to either allow or disallow secure desktop on your computer. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.